are you bringing? Who are you? Where are you staying? Yeah. Yep. I knew absolutely nothing because, br- I mean, I knew who I was, but that's it. <laughs> like, I'm at the bathroom. I can't. <laughs> I knew who I was. You're you like, I'm but I, I do everything. When if you travel with me, Brianna staying? is the one who knows everything. Where, where are you staying? I don't know. So like, I, how I do you know everything out with the most illegible handwriting? Welcome back to the business of soul searching. I'm Erin, your host, and I invite you to join me as I travel from city to city, interviewing people from different walks of life that have faced their fear and came out on the other side. Are you ready for this? Hey everyone, this is Erin from the Business of Soul Searching. I am back with my usual mix of soul searching stories and controversy. I'm so happy to be back. I'm with Brianna Derry. Um, she's a lover of all things travel, photography, and food. She is head of Derry Travel as a travel agent and has visited 31 countries. She's also moving to Florida shortly um, and will be working on photography tours. So, um, so yeah, thank you so much for coming on my show. Thank you, Erin. And if you need a travel agent, especially in the upcoming holiday season, um, you can reach me on Facebook, Dairy Travel, Instagram, Dairy Travel, or my webpage is uh, dairytravel.com. Yes. So, 31 countries. So, there's some people, especially coming from Rhode Island, for me, I know specifically know people that haven't even been out of the state. Um, me too. Tons, right? Tons. tons and tons. And I really, really, um, put w- one of the missions of my show is to encourage people to travel because you learn so much. Um, and just really just the travel stories. And I asked my guests, what is your favorite travel story? I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's probably yeah. one of the best and it's one of my first. Two years ago, um, very uh, they were changing the laws and everything, so we're like, let's go to Cuba. It looks yes, amazing, yes, yes, yes. and I'm glad I got in there when I did because everything's changing very, very quickly there. Mm-hmm. Um, so a friend of mine, Heather, who also I, I live with right now, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> we went, and it was an amazing trip. But to get there got a little interesting because uh, we. We even to start. Even to start. So even, even to start. They're like the airport here in Warwick, Providence. Um, she was very hesitant. The ticketing agent was very hesitant to print our boarding passes. Switched into no, no, no. We're, we're going, doing this. and you're going to give me the ticket now. Mm-hmm. And I don't do that very often, but I was in mm-hmm. that mode, and Heather probably watched me, and I was like, oh no, no, no. I pulled out all the stuff. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> but they didn't tell us this. But da, da, da. yep, and I've long, been there. And long story short, mm-hmm. we got on that damn plane in Providence, and there was no issue. So they printed all of our boarding passes at that one. So for their, our our trip to Miami. And then for our trip the next morning from Miami to uh, Cuba. Cuba. Okay. <clears throat> so now we had a stop. Wait, and just to make sure. So you guys are going from Providence to Miami and then having almost like an, a layover yes. overnight. Six hours? What was it? It wasn't oh, that long. Bad. It was in Miami. It, it, was, eight or it nine. was. It was ten to six or ten to eight. Oh, okay. But we it, didn't get in until ten because we couldn't get our um, visas. For the visiting oh, Cuba wow. printed that night because we were too late. We weren't going to be there early enough. Or we, oh. were, we were there too late. So we gotcha. had to do it the next morning. Gotcha. And then that's when your second bar. Okay. All right. So then, um, you know, Chelsea picked us up. That was cool. It was it was pretty late. We're like, oh, we'll go out. We'll go out. <laughs> it was a famous yes. last word. We'll go out. Just have we'll a go out. We're in Miami. In Miami. Miami Beach. Where Why? Where did you get? Where is there to go? Because I haven't been to Miami oh, there's yet. And so it's so many sad. places to go. It's but so we sad. went to like a dive where I used to work because I know it's open until two. It was close to Chelsea's house, and Chelsea was nice enough. Thank you, Chelsea. Was Chel- <laughs> was Shout my- out, Chelsea. Yes. And, and there were more thank you, Chelsea's to come. There was lots of thank you, Chelsea's because she, <laughs> yes, she went a thousand on the highway, got us there on time, well, uh, got us there on time, and I still made it. Someone else didn't. Yeah, but um, we'll get to that. <laughs> we will we'll get, get to that. that. Um, so, 
Chelsea got us. We went out for a little bit, had a little bit to eat, had had some drinks. Nothing <laughs> I crazy. I remember eating. Well, I, I like a little bit of the food there, so I remember eating a little bit, not too much. Yeah. And then we went, went back, to Chelsea's. back to Chelsea's, and I remember having like a margarita or two. Nothing crazy. I like I still remember that. And then it, it was pretty late, and then we went to sleep probably at three, and the yeah, flight's I think at three. Six, what is it? Six? Five. <laughs> people say it's a good idea to like just stay up and then it's like, no, it's not. So we, we tried to sleep, which we did. We slept very peacefully for about <laughs> two and a half hours or three hours, which was probably an hour and a half too long. Yep. And <laughs> then we were waking with yeah. Chelsea, thank God, goes, guys, uh, are you going to go there? So we're all sleeping in the same bedroom. She and Chelsea are in the bed, and I'm on the floor on a mattress. That's and, how I usually sleep. And all of a sudden, Chelsea's like, guys, it's 530. And both of us are like, yeah, so what? <laughs> Chelsea's like, we have to be at the airport. Now. Like, oh, my God. And then I wake up, I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Get up, everyone! Get up! Get up! Get up! <laughs> so I'm running around. I'm repacking everything. I'm like, blah, 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 blah. Chelsea's like, do you want coffee? I'm like, no! We don't have time for coffee. This one's brushing teeth. I'm like, we don't have time for brushing teeth. We gotta go. This is it. Brush your stuff at right. the airport. Worry about it then. And I didn't even have myself brush my teeth because they oh, they wouldn't give us our bags to get oh, off the airport. They wouldn't, right. So oh, I was like, I can't all... even brush my teeth. That's all Because I made that mistake. Right. I didn't put it in my, yep, my yep. purse. I learned that the long way. Oh my god. So we made it there on time. Check our bags. So we made it there on time, barely. And then Miss Heather. So we were standing there at the gate to well, we were going through security. Yep. And I could not find my boarding pass anywhere. Anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. If you travel with me, these are the no no's. So (laughs) no no number one. No 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 number one. Because I will leave your ass. (laughs) So I had to go back to the um, ticketing area so that I could reprint my boarding pass. In the meantime, I'm already at the gate. I got her, her visas. I got her visa. Oh. I got my visa. I'm like, well, let's go. Yeah. So now, of course, we're hungover, like disgusting. Hungover. Yeah, I was still drunk. Miami hungover. I can still only imagine drunk. the heat. But I'm like, Ugh. I'm used to this shit. I'm like, let's yeah. go. Let's go. Ready to go. <laughs> so anyway, so I'm back at the little kiosk, and I'm trying to print my boarding pass, and then the time's out because it's too late mm-hmm. for me to print my boarding oh, pass, oh, yes. right? Because okay. I've been to the, yep. the flight departing. Like, it's too close. It's like, but I'm still going to get on this. So I'm like, well, let me just look at my wallet again. Eureka, I find my boarding pass. Mm. Awesome. Let me go back through security. So now, security was pretty empty when we got there at whatever time, which was 6 a.m. Chelsea got us to the airport in like 12 minutes flat. Again, thank you, Chelsea (laughs) Carvalho. You are the best. Yes. So I go back through security. There's tons of people there. There's drug dogs, the whole nine yards. So I go back through and... I get to the gate where the, uh, I don't remember, air, whatever airline we're fly, flying on. American? But the agent had my had my visa, which was probably very wrong for her to do, to hold on to it for me. But she had my phone number. She had my visa. Everything. I was Brianna. like, I'm setting it up. I'm setting it up. I set up everything. I was on point. I was like, I don't care how hungover I am. I'm like, so listen. Get we're far? getting this. I don't even remember if I got that far. Maybe I hadn't But I set far. it up that if she did get that far, I'm like, this is where your visa is. This is where, the, this is why, this is why I'm a travel agent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because as hungover as I was, That's I right. made sure this is what we're you doing. do. Yeah. Yeah. This is what you got to do. This is where you got to go. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. And like. No, I didn't get through security because she didn't make I, it time. I tried. I had lost my passport at that point. Oh. So I lost. Yeah. Stupid. Stupid, <laughs> stupid, stupid. So I can't find my passport. I don't go through everything. Oh, my God. So I'm like, I must have left it at the kiosk. So I go back again to the ticketing area. And I'm looking everywhere. It is definitely crowded at this point, and I can't find it. I'm like, what kiosk was I at? Because they all look the same Mm. at this point. So I can't find it anywhere. I'm dying at this point. I'm like, I just want some water. So I went and Thank you. You must be dehydrated. (laughs) You must be water. Let me regroup. In the meantime, so I'm, I'm controlling the whole world. This is I'm like, what do story. I do? What do I do? I gotta get her on this plane. Oh Heather, where God. are you? What's going on? Oh boy. Like I'm making it like it's a military mission. Yep, like yep. you gotta sure. get on this plane like, now. Back in the day with yep. the next yep. yep. or whatever. Yep. Like, okay, <laughs> Roger that. Heather's like, I don't know. I'm like, get no, here. Like, 
it's time. Yeah. So I get my water. There's a mirror nearby. And I'm like, maybe I can get somebody to help me. I look in the mirror. <laughs> now, thankfully, we had gotten spray tans the day before. So yeah. I don't look like a pale, hungover mess. I look at myself in the mirror, and I was like, Wait. okay, girl, you look all right. I think, so I think we're right find a way to help you. <laughs> Yes! So there was a kid, and I don't remember what he did for the airline, but I approached him, and I was like, I can't find my passport anywhere. Mm. So uh, he helped me, and he made a couple of phone calls, and so we found my passport. And So at this point now, I am booked on a flight that's an hour and a half behind. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, we definitely were talking about some awesome travel stories, and as a global traveler, that was hands down one of the <laughs> best travel oh, I got more. Don't I've, worry. I've ever heard. I had to take a break, and just, I was crying, I was laughing so hard. So, um, so yeah, so to move on with the interview, um, what is something about travel that most people underestimate or are unaware of when they're traveling i think you have to expect that things can always change mm. and you have to be very and even though i'm not always the most laid-back person mm-hmm. i think i am when it comes to travel i expect things to change i expect to be stranded i because yeah. it's happened to me many times yeah i expect that my friend will lose her passport <laughs> and her ticket which comes from experience and, so you live and you learn and, and and i i didn't you know i never I, I don't think i ever got mad or anything about it i just go okay well i'm gonna get there because someone's mm. gotta go there in case our luggage is there and mm-hmm. you know i, I kind of treat it like a mission mm. like it's like my own private mission like okay so everything didn't work out the way it was but mm-hmm. that's okay because now i have to make it i have to make sure whatever i can do i'm gonna change it so it turns into the best circumstance it, it can definitely as of right now but mm. you just have to expect that things are not always going to go as planned yes because if you think everything's always going to go perfect just general in life it's not yeah and you just have to be prepared for that and what i've realized with that you're going to feel like a clinging like a, a clawing and gnawing when you think when you think that things are going to go your way you just hang on and you're like, oh, like I, I wish it was going as opposed you're to releasing and understanding. You're doing such an amazing thing being able to go where you're going. So you should never, you know, I always, I hate doing this, but like mm-hmm. first world problems. Mm-hmm. You're already doing something that's so amazing that you can go here, go there. Mm-hmm. And I always try to stay humble and, and realize like, even though when I go for very inexpensive trips and I find the best deals, like I'm doing something that I'm so blessed that I like figured out to do that mm. I, I should be so humble. And even if I get stranded somewhere, like that's not the end of the world because yeah. there's so many more things in this world that are I'm just blessed that worse. To, to be going in general and mm-hmm. so I'm just so appreciative that the places I've got to see yes I figured out the ways to get the deals but um you just should you know anything can happen like I've lost two days of trips that stranded in airports and I don't take backpacks anymore mm. don't take backpacks no because if you take those big huge backpacks and then you're stranded for like I don't know you have 12 to carry hours that with you. that's what you got to sh- and then you're in this airport that happens to be in um Edinburgh, I think. No. Just take the one that you go. Because I remember my back hurt so bad because I thought I was like, oh, yeah, this new L.L. Bean backpack. Mm-hmm. And no. Oh. I had to lug that thing around for 12 hours because electricity went out and I got a 24-hour delay in Providence for Norwegian Air. So just what are to, What are the odds? Like, um, But you never know. You never know. Saying. That's the thing. You just never know. Yep, yep. Um, and so what is it about travel that you that inspires you? To keep going, even after situations like that. Because there's certain times when you just see certain places and certain things that you would never see, like, you know, here in Rhode Island. And um, Mm. just, like, especially, I think, you know, when I went to Iceland, like, there's just certain sites that, like, when you see, or even when I was younger, I went cross-country and I saw, um, uh, what is it, the Grand Canyon. There's certain things when you see for yourself. Mm -hmm. They're they're just so different than seeing in a picture. Mm. And it's just so inspiring and and like wow i saw this with my own eyes like i didn't see this in a picture mm-hmm. i saw this in real life and it's it, it's almost addictive like Definitely. i want to i want to see things in real life and it's so different than just seeing in the pictures mm. definitely i i agree that's how i feel about greece um in certain other places it's just like you have to be there to feel the energy 
Like, there's some places I've been that I'm like, I can't even really tell you about it because you just have to be with the people. Yeah. And, like, feel it. Like, you just have to feel it. It doesn't have a name. Um, but, yeah, traveling is amazing. It's so good for the mental health, too. Even it though is. it can be stressful. It's, it's very different. It can be <laughs> stressful, but totally. Yeah, yeah. Um, and how does travel impact your soul-searching journey? Like, your internal journey of life. Kind of like the same same thing, like mm-hmm. seeing it in person, seeing the way other people live, seeing other lifestyles like outside of Rhode Island, but or just in general outside mm-hmm. of the United States. It's so different. Like going to Bali, the uh, I think you went. To, I've been to Bali the, too. Yeah, the volcano was blowing up. You would never know. Uh, it was a big thing on the news, but not a big thing there. Mm-hmm. Nobody cared. Yeah. Nobody, People They're are like, still carrying their things. Got to get this money and pray and do didn't what they even, do. You Meditate. didn't even know or anything because it's you know it is what it is. But mm. every like you know the media blows up these things and it's just totally different when you go to another country. Mm. What they think about compared to what we think about. Bali was one. Thailand was another. Anyway, anywhere that's much different than you know Western standards is always like it's not a shock to me anymore. But it's just so different of what they're appreciative mm. and that what we should be appreciative not like you know these materialistic things and mm-hmm. traveling really opened my eye up to like material things do not matter like at all because you bit. see these people that are I'm not so saying happy i don't like nice not. yeah of course i'm not saying i don't like nice things yeah but they are the they're just really yeah you see these definitely like you were saying i think i think also um at least in our society, the, the thing with materialistic things is it doesn't stop. Yeah. Like, it doesn't stop. Like, I want this type of car. Then it's like, ooh, I, maybe I could get this type of car. And I could get this type of, like, bag or man or, you know, whatever it is with that everything, you like. everything, always looking for the next best thing. And right? even today, I, I, I want to trade my my car in mm-hmm. for like a jeep or something but yeah. i couldn't help myself and you, <laughs> to go look at like oh, you're what's, seeing th- i like this uh you know i like this audi like suv and i'm like brianna walk away walk See? away <laughs> this so, is you do not so need this you do not need this yeah like you're yeah. not paying for an audi suv mm. walk away get a jeep a cheap old jeep mm-hmm. like so, I, I mean, I get it because, like, I'm totally drawn to, but I just, you know, over the years, I think traveling has actually made me have more self-control over materialistic things. Definitely. Like, love that yeah. stuff. But I'm almost humble and happy that there's times where I had to stay in, like, the Airbnb in Cuba. Like, that was gorgeous, I think, and we had great views mm. to see with the other culture, to get breakfast by the Cuban people, mm. you know, stuff like that. And, mm-hmm. and the same thing in um, Bali when I stayed in a rice field with my sister oh, wow. in the middle of nowhere where they cooked us breakfast. I, I'm glad I didn't stay at that five-star resort because I really got to know what the culture was like and what they do and Mm -hmm. and it just humbles you that you know like all that stuff doesn't matter and like I said I'm not saying I don't like it and I'm gonna gonna turn it down yeah yeah yeah. but it's it's nice to um you know at points in my life that I I had to do that and it was a great experience because it it ended up I I got to see the culture more than I ever would in a in a five-star for sure oh that's definite um and so with all this experience how do you feel like um, people choosing you as a travel agent is different from, you know, maybe other travel agents if they haven't traveled as much as you have? Well, I think number one is, um, especially right now, hopefully soon it will be different and mm-hmm. there'll, be, there'll be more of me. But mm-hmm. right now, like, you're talking directly to somebody. Mm-hmm. Like, you're getting firsthand experience. Like, I will stop my day. I will stop my day and I will make sure I answer everything you need, mm. you know, whether it's in a text, whether it's in a message and, and uh, even further on from that, you know, I, when I have more employees, I want it to be like that. Mm-hmm. It's not just you have this automated system and you press this yeah. and you press, press that. one for this and press it's, two for... It's very personal and especially right now, it's very knowledgeable and every, and if, if I don't know something like, you know, I just did... um. I did a Disney trip, Disney trip, and I haven't been to Disney in a long time. Mm-hmm. But I also work for a host company, and if I give a hundred percent, if I can't figure something out that I don't know, I will call the ladies in my office, and they know all that, you mm-hmm. know, especially because they mm-hmm. have children and whatnot. So, you know, that's the great thing right now. If I can't figure something out, I will make sure that I talk to somebody who knows five mm. times of it. But if I can figure something out, believe me, I will. You will. You'll I, be. I will it. give you the best and, knowledge. And we've heard in the stories. <laughs> I do. Stories. I make sure stuff happens. I make things happen. You make it happen. (laughs) Yes, 100%. Um, And so I guess as we wrap up this interview, um, I wish you the best. You're going to Florida. You're going to be, you know, eventually doing photography tours, which is really exciting. In addition. Um, You know, in addition to you being a travel agent. And um, 
for people that have been listening to this entire interview thank you you are a blessing and i hope you got a bunch of gems i know i did out of this interview Please leave them with how they can find you. I know you left in the beginning, but uh, I will leave it with you can find me on um, Instagram at Dairy Travel. You can find me on Facebook, Dairy Travel, or Brianna Dari is my personal uh, Facebook page. And then if if all that does fails, you can go to DairyTravel.com is my website, and there's a way to contact me. Anything you want to know, hit me up with questions, places you want to go. I will give you the best information I can, even if I can't direct you as a travel agent and book your things. I can tell you other ways to go also. Yes. Thank you so much for this interview. It was very educational. It was funny. I laughed. I cried. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, the best. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Business of Soul Searching. If you have any exciting soul searching stories, please email them to thebusinessofsoulsearching at gmail.com for a possible shout out in next week's episode. Most importantly, take a calculated risk this week. Don't do it for me, do it for you. <laughs>